It's a good Ag AM in Kansas morning. Good morning. Let's take a look and see what's coming up today. On Horsing Around, K-State's Dr. Chris Blevins discusses vaccines, including their safety, how to administer, and more. Then we catch up with Bob Weber at the Winter Ranch Management Meeting, where he discusses artificial insemination. Next, Jane Linfarney talks about the use of ionophores in replacement heifers, and Ken McCauley, a member of the Kansas Corn Commission, stresses the importance of corn schools. Finally, we meet Matt Holbrook with DuPont Pioneer, proud sponsor of this year's Corn Schools. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress, powered by Kansas Farmers. This segment is brought to you by Kansas Wheat. Learn more at rediscoverwheat.org. Hello and welcome to Horsin' Around. I'm Dr. Chris Blevins at Kansas State University Veterinary Health Center. And today we're going to talk about vaccines when it comes to combination vaccines, safety of the vaccines, administering the vaccines, and what type of vaccines when you go and buy them to things to look for in those vaccines. I think that initially, you know, one of the biggest things a lot of horse owners ask me about is combination vaccines. Are they as effective as individually giving those vaccines to your horse? Because we all know there's the five-way, the six-way, even a, like a seven-way vaccine. And how effective is that vaccine? Because maybe it's a little bit cheaper than buying those individually. In addition, we don't have to poke your horse as much uh, with vaccines if they're already in a combination. And a lot of those combination vaccines are pretty good safety aspects or measures when giving it to your horse, and they do build up good immunity. However, there is some newer research that says or has uh, altered towards uh, having West Nile vaccine in its own separate type of vaccine when you're giving it to your horse. And so I think discuss with your veterinarian before you buy vaccines or administer them to them to figure out what's the best combination of vaccines to go with. Again, a lot of the, the combination vaccines are pretty effective in boosting a good immune system, but maybe having a separate West Nile and other aspects as you discuss with your veterinarian is something to think about when it comes to combination vaccines and sometimes being a little bit cheaper may not be building up an enough immune system for your horse. So think about those things as you're developing, buying vaccines in the spring and figuring out what's the best case for your horse in those combinations of vaccines you can give. The other thing would be as you buy vaccines is to always look at the serial number and expiration of the vaccine. So look on the bottles, look on the packaging, making sure that you're not buying expired products. Anything that's expired, then it's aspect of how effective some of those vaccines are uh, could be in question. And so making sure you're not getting expired vaccines or if you have vaccines already bought from last season, are they still effective? Look at the expiration and knowing how and where to store vaccines is always very important. It should be refrigerated, kept cool. And uh, the other thing is when you buy vaccines, who are you buying them from? Are they keeping those vaccines in a controlled environment? Did they warm up and then they put them back in the cooler? And how effective are those vaccines after they warm up is always in question. So knowing your supplier or who you're buying the vaccines for and making sure those vaccines are stored properly so then they're effective for your horse is also very important. So you can get that based on the expiration and uh, discussing with your veterinarian or your supplier how they're controlling or their control measures of keeping those vaccines safe and supplied correctly is also something to always remember. Also remember whenever you're given vaccines, it's always deep IM. So deep in the muscle when you give IM injections to your horse, inch and a half length needles when you give those. Sharp needles are also very important and a fresh needle per horse is also very important. You do not want to reuse needles between horses because you can always transfer diseases from one horse to the other by trying to reuse needles uh, when you're vaccinating your horse. So that's a quick little rendition of safety of vaccines and what to look for when you're buying vaccines, whether through your veterinarian that you can discuss with or through different suppliers of different vaccines that are out there. I'm Dr. Chris Blevins at Kansas State University Veterinary Health Center with Horsin' Around and we'll see you around.
Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We are having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. Tallgrass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tallgrass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. Ag AM in Kansas is brought to you in part by SureCrop, liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. Hi, my name is Bob Weber, Cow-Calf Extension Specialist, and recently participated in our Winter Ranch Management Series of meetings for beef producers here in Kansas. One of my favorite aspects of these programs is at the end, we offer um, basically a Stump the Specialist segment where it's a Q&A from the floor um, to our Extension Specialist team. And we always get some interesting uh, questions um, during that time period, and it provides a nice opportunity for interaction um, with our beef producers here in Kansas. A couple of questions came up at a recent meeting um, that I'd like to share with you. One of those was um, about the effectiveness of AI um, or artificial insemination and synchronization programs as a tool um, for breeding uh, replacement heifers for their first calf. And that's certainly a, a strategy that we encourage producers to uh, implement and think about in their programs because it has a number of advantages. One of those is that you can be very precise then in your AI mating decisions about which bulls you choose um, to help minimize dystocia events um, in those heifers' first calving experience. And we know that those heifers that go through um, and calve as first calf heifers without any difficulty have shorter postpartum intervals and a higher likelihood of rebreeding as two-year-olds. Um, so synchronization programs range from um, simple ones from either a two-shot prostaglandin injection um, with heat detection or feeding MGA to heifers um, to uh, induce um, uh, synchronization in terms of estrus behavior. Um, very effective programs. Um, more sophisticated ones um, include the use of uh, um, a controlled internal drug release device or what we call a cedar um, to uh, um, synchronize those females estrus behavior. Um, and then you can either use um, estrus observation or breeding on heats um, with those females or fixed time AI. And those all offer a range of, of capabilities and, and utility based on um, expected conception rates, which are typically range somewhere from 50 to 70 percent, depending on which protocol you use. Um, but they allow you to be very precise in sire selection um, and producing females that all calve in a relatively short period of time. One of the things we know in heifers is that producers like to observe those females um, during calving season. Um, and so providing a tight synchrony in terms of breeding also provides relatively tight synchrony uh, in terms of calving. And so you can reduce labor um, in the springtime when you're calving those cows by having them calve in a relatively short period of time. Another question that was posed to us um, regarding selection was how to use a variety of EPDs from different breeds. And um, one of the tools that's available um, is a table called the Across Breed EPD Adjustment Table. And that's produced each year and released in conjunction um, with the Beef Improvement Federation annual meeting. Um, the data is compiled and processed and analyzed by scientists at the U.S. Meat Animal Research Center in Clay Center, Nebraska. And that table basically lets you convert EPDs of, for animals of one breed to another breed. And typically the base is Angus. We, frequently move animals from one breed to the Angus base. Um, but in many situations where producers are thinking about crossbreeding systems, they want to be able to um, convert breeds or uh, animals of one breed to a breed besides Angus. Um, and so I've produced a, a crossbreed EPD adjustment worksheet um, that's available in the breeding and genetics section on ksubeef.org and allows you to move EPDs from one base to any other base conveniently. So we'd encourage producers, if they're interested in that tool, to uh, find it, again, at the breeding and genetics section at ksubeef.org. Um, another thing that's happened over the last few months is a number of breeds have gone together um, and report their EPDs on a common base. Um, and those breeds include Simmental, Red Angus, Gelby, Limousine, Shorthorn, Maine Anjou, and Kianina, as well as um, Canadian equivalents of Angus, Gelby, and Limousine. 
Um, and you can use the EPDs on animals from those breeds and compare them against other animals within that um, population without adjustment. So um, be aware if you're in the bull buying market this spring and considering bulls, maybe a Simmental bull and a Gelby bull, um, you don't have to do anything to convert the EPDs to different bases in that decision point. This hog is Hanover hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. I'm Dr. Frank Lyons, a physician here at Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. As one of the only standalone stem cell centers in the U.S., we use your stem cells as therapy for arthritis and some autoimmune diseases. I'm Dr. Andrew Poe. Here at Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center, utilizing the latest technology under strict protocols, we're able to harvest your stem cells from your own fat to treat a variety of medical conditions. The best part about it is, it's a same-day surgical procedure and requires no general anesthesia. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment is brought to you by Central National Bank. Put our ag professionals to work for you. Hello again, it's Jamie Lynn Farney, Southeast Area Beef System Specialist with Kansas State University. One of the interesting things that comes from our winter ranch management meetings is the open forum session where we get some interesting questions from you producers. One question that I want to highlight is the use of ionophores in replacement heifers and your cow operation. That specifically by ionophores I mean rumensin and bovatec. Uh, rumensin, it's uh, the drug name for rumensin is called monensin, whereas lasalicid is the drug name for bovatec. The trade names are that mo are Rumensin and Bovatec. Now, both of those ionophores have been proven to increase feed efficiency by 10%. By that, I mean you can feed your cows 10% hay and maintain the same amount of body condition score. As well, in your heifers, when you feed them an ionophore, you increase your conception rates. Uh, ionophores, like I said, increase efficiency by 10% for only about a two cent a head a day cost. That is a tremendous return on investment. Now, the one downside to your ionophores, they are great for your ruminant species, not so much for your horses though. There are, they, uh, ionophores are tremendously toxic for your horses. And such, you need to make sure if you are to feed ruminants into your cattle and you have horses around, keep your feed separate. Ideally, if you can even keep them in separate barns, that way you don't accidentally get from the wrong bag. I know I do every once in a while. So you want to make ionophores are great to feed to cattle, increase gains, increase feed efficiency, increase your bottom line. As well, they are potentially toxic for horses, so make sure to keep them separate from other types of feeds. One thing to identify with your ionophores, according to label use, Rumensin or your menensin is the only approved ionophore for use in lactating mature cows. Therefore, make sure you follow label directions and feed the appropriate dosage in the appropriate types of feeds according to manufacturer's directions. Once again, rumensin is the only approved ionophore for cows. However, for your growing replacement heifers and stalkers, you can feed both Rumensin or Bovatec according to label directions.
American innovation is being driven in places you might not expect by people like Brent Hayek, an Oklahoma family farmer who recently set a world land speed record in a Ford Super Duty pickup truck powered by renewable B20 biodiesel. Advanced performance is here, now, putting America on the fast track to more jobs and energy independence. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. When your living depends on agriculture, you can depend on KFRM 550 AM. If you're in the southwest three-fourths of Kansas or the northern half of Oklahoma, catch us at 550 AM on the radio dial. But if that isn't you, listen on your cell phone at TuneIn Radio or on your computer at KFRM.com. We promise to keep you informed, entertained, and company as you go through your day. KFRM 550 AM, the voice of the plains. We would like to join your management team. This segment is brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. I'm Ken McCauley, farmer from White Cloud, Kansas, mem member of the Kansas Corn Commission. I farm uh, with my son and my wife in uh, White Cloud, co raise corn and soybeans, all no-till. Uh, we, we try to do uh, more corn than soybeans as, as we go, depending on what the uh, market asks us to do. So we've, we've been as high as 80% corn on our farm in the past, but we're currently just a little over 50% corn right now. Well, this is meeting season and uh, Kansas Corn Commission has, has decided that we would like to be more visible and, and this is, the corn schools are really important to producers along with the fact that, that this gives us a chance to uh, toot our own horn a little bit and talk to the producers about where their checkoffs, actually the checkoff money goes. and we. We've always been proactive in, in being at events like this. The importance of a meeting like this is you get to hear from the university, the professionals, but there's a lot of professionals in the room also. And the network aspect of this is, is tremendous. Uh, anyone that goes to meetings like this knows that the meeting in the hallway or the conversation at lunch is where you really pick up the, uh, the thing that you might not know. And most farmers do a good job. Most farmers know what they're doing. And, but they also know that there's always room for improvement, something that either worked or didn't work. And, you know, honestly, I've learned a lot more from being wrong than I ever did being right. And that's where you really pick up something that saves your rear end. Uh, you know, next year when things really get tight, you learn the markets this morning from Dan O'Brien. And now they're talking about weed resistance, which, you know, it, it, it's a fast changing world right now. And the things that happen, you, you, once you find out that they happen to you, it's too late. What the Corn Commission will do here in the, in the next uh, year or two is become more visible through social media, through things like this, and we count on our growers and checkoff uh, producers, corn growers, to re retweet and, and become involved and expand that message so it, uh, it actually has a lot more credibility when, when producers do these things. So I've been a big proponent of that, uh, social media of Twitter and Facebook especially, of the members that, that retweet and repost our, 
our messages because that you know the the media itself uh, networks and TV radio everything's very important to all of us but these new new things are are really important to uh, to get that message out with the credibility and also to a bigger audience This is the fast track to more jobs and America's energy independence. Advanced performance is here now. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Tarwater Farm and Home is a nearly 40-year-old local family-owned business. Clothing for work and play, seeds and feeds, boots, toys for the kids, the tools you need for around the home and farm, and a service department to keep them in top running order. It's a big store, so when you have some time, take some time to see what they have for your farm and home. Tarwater's everyday pricing is like others' sale prices. When you need it, they've got it. Tarwater Farm and Home, 4107 North Topeka Boulevard. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. National Bank Ag Professional. You'll be a good company. They'll help you track expense lines, manage variable input costs, assess ground agreements, pick a crop protection plan. These times demand Ag Professionals. Central National Bank. You could profit from what they know. Ag operations run better on Central Time. Central National Bank. Money for life. Member FDIC in your hometown since 1884. This segment is brought to you by Tarwater Farm and Home. Come on by, we'll treat you like family. I'm Matt Haybrock with uh, DuPont Pioneer, and it's a, it's a great pleasure to be here today on behalf of DuPont Pioneer and to have the opportunity to sponsor um, these corn management schools. Kansas State University and the Kansas Corn Growers Association have been great partners for Pioneer and these opportunities like this to bring um, farmers into a room um, at a time when they're generally not as busy as they can be at other times of the year, give them the chance to, um, to get the resources available from K-State and hear from those, um, those tremendous uh, economists and um, agronomists and so forth that are on staff at K-State to get, help them um, build their knowledge base and to help them um, start thinking about next year, start thinking about decisions they can make on their farms. Uh, to increase their profitability and hopefully make um, next year's crop um, just as good and successful as this past year's was. Pioneers um, obviously year in and year out has a tremendous research um, um, investment in helping to continue to develop products. In the United States for instance you know our priority markets are going to be in, corn, in crops like corn, soybeans, sorghum, continuing to look at those, uh, improving the agronomic characteristics of those crops to increase yield, help with some of the agronomic uh, pressures that we're seeing um, and so forth. So. At the end of the day, farmers always love a little bit more yield, and that's really what we're striving for, is, is putting those agronomic traits and practices into place that will help farmers achieve um, that yield they're looking for. Um, Pioneer really understands the value in, um, in relationships and partnerships with both our customers as well as industry groups, universities, and so on. And a lot of that is built on um, helping to um, share expertise. Um, we've had great relationships with many different organizations in Kansas representing the various crops that um, we sell. And those relationships with, for instance, Kansas Corn Growers Association are so important because those farmer leaders are helping to shape the future of agriculture. And we want to help provide them um, with that opportunity to do so and to help encourage them to continue to lead the industry forward. And then when you look like um, institutions such as K-State University, that is just a, a great wealth of knowledge that we can use um, at Pioneer to help us in our efforts of de delivering the right products for the right acres for our customers and um, using some of the, the resources that they've been developed to help us um, internally as well. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, Progress, powered by Kansas Farmers.